Alrighty, well, good morning everybody, and time once again for my cast, and let me go ahead and intro the music like I usually do. Um, this one here is a, kind of an interesting one, and I found this one on Spur of the Moment. Um, there was, uh, I went through my, my, uh, Watch Later folder on YouTube, and, um, there was one that I wanted to play called, or, one that I had, I heard a little tiny bit of, thought, hmm, this looks interesting, or this sounds interesting, excuse me, and I put it in my, uh, my watch later folder um actually i'll listen to a little more of this it, it was called gone mage uh i don't it's like it's supposed to be kind of 8-bit or 8-bit uh eight, eight chip tune 8-bit chip tune music listen to more of it and it just sounded fucking horrible I, it believe it or not it actually sounded like some of the music i hear at work so, naturally, I sure as hell don't want to hear it here. So, but anyway. Um, this one here that I'm going to play is called is Occult Obsidian. SPQR. Uh, Roman Dungeon Synth. Now, this is kind of interesting. Never heard of this. You know, never heard of this kind of dungeon synth before. And uh, these guys here, they're from uh, Slovakia. Or Czechoslovakia. Um... And I looked on their description, I didn't see anything about this being copyrighted, so I should be safe. So, let me go ahead and... March of the Gods. But otherwise, um, I do have a fair amount I have to go over. Uh, some, of it I, some of it I've been forgetting to say during my past cast, so... Hopefully I'll remember to get it this time. Um... Well, to start with, I uh, just played a lot of Gems of War, uh, mostly in PvP. I think that's where you get most of your money. Or that's... Yeah, I think that's where you get most of your gold. Uh, just trying to trying to stock up for the start of the new week. Um, in my guild, you have to have... You have to contribute... You have to contribute a certain amount, in a gold, a certain amount of gold. Um, so, like I said, I just worked on that. Got that, got a, got that all taken care of, so I should be mostly squared away for the week. Um, but um, one, but because one thing, there's, I'm thinking as early as today, but there's gonna be a sea change in in the way I, in in what I stream because, um, I think. I think tomorrow, the Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker expansion starts up. So, which means, potentially, today is going to be the last day that I play Gems of War. At least consistently. But like I said, these... I haven't really... I have... Nothing's really carved in stone right now. But, um... I do want to... I do want to do... And I do want to start Endwalker, like, tomorrow right when it starts up. But I'm also guessing that um, because a lot of other people are also wanting to play as well, uh, servers might be so jammed up that it may not be worth it may not even be worth it. I might have to wait until later, like after everything's after everything's died down a little bit, after the new car smell has worn off, and then do it. But like I said, this is all just talk right now. So but like but as of right now, today's gonna be the last day that I uh, play Gems of War, at least consistently. Probably what I have in my mind right now is play Gems of War long enough to just, um, like, do the dailies or something. And then just, um, after I'm done with that... Oh, I'm, I'm talking about streaming, by the way. Um, just do, like, the dailies, the daily maintenance stuff, or the maintenance-type stuff, and then switch over to Final Fantasy XIV. That's what's currently on the table. So. And. For um. And for the. For Final Fantasy 14 itself. I. I'm. As a. As a genre. I'm kind of burnt out. From playing MMORPGs so much. Um. They're actually my favorite genre of game to play. But again. Even I get burned out on something like that. So. It. It kind of kicked in. Uh, you get a little bit of history here, but um, in the mid 2000s, I was playing a game called RuneScape. 
for about six years, and then switched over and played Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft for about four and a half years. And then, um, and then after that, it was Final Fantasy XIV the first time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say for about five years. There was a, I took a nine month hiatus to play, play a game called Path of Exile, and then came back, played Final Fantasy XIV some more, and then took basically a one year hiatus to play Guild Wars 2. And then, this was, this was right around the time where I just, I cried uncle on MMORPGs, just burn out on them, uh, quit that, and then I think I played, uh, that was when I started playing a game called City Skylines, that was right around the time that I was, uh, I checked out a, a YouTube channel called Not Just Bikes, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a civil, or it's a city planning slash civil engineer channel, and they're just basically talking about all the, all society's woes from the uh, city planning front, you know, how there's way more parking lots than there are actual buildings, that kind of thing. So, so that, um, I think I read, a, I was reading, I started reading a book called Strong Towns. And then also I checked out another channel called Do Not Eat. But all of these were centered around uh, urban planning and um, civil engineering, that kind of thing. So that, that prompted me to play a game called City Skylines. But that game, that game basically became unplay, unstreamable because it's such a resource hog. So, quit that game, and then switch. And then totally on a whim, I decided to play some Gems of War. And around that time, when I was streaming it, a guy named DJ Screw jumped in and helped me out. He basically got me to where I am today. Which now that I think about it, with Guild Wars 2, when I was streaming it, another person. And to my embarrassment, I can't remember her name, but she was like that too. She um she helped uh she helped me get me to where I am in that game. So again, without without their help, I probably would have gone on to play something else. So but anyway, getting back to getting back to Final Fantasy fourteen. Um again as a genre, I'm kinda burnt. So the current plan with that game is I'll probably, uh, my main class in that game was the warrior class. Um, my main role in that game is the tank. So I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail because I already still have a fair amount to talk about, but tanks are basically the front line guys. They're the ones that first charge into the monsters, um, try to, you know, Try to keep all the monsters focused on it, focused on him, while the damage dealers they deal their damage. The healers keep everybody healed up, keep them from dying. Basically, the tanks are the offensive linemen of that group. They're the ones that do all the blocking, so the running back or the wide receiver can grab, catch the ball, and score the touchdown. You know where you know the running backs, the you know the damage dealers, other running backs, and the wide receivers. You know, they're the ones that do the actual scoring. Um, the healers are like the field medics. They're like the uh, trainers and doctors. You know, keeping everybody in ship. You know, in ship shape. So, but anyway, my main role in any uh, MMORPG is the tank. Um, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably get on my warrior class, play it until I complete the storyline, and. Once I complete the storyline, once I get to the end game, the game basically becomes a gear grind. You're going to be focusing your time on leveling other classes, trying to get them to the to max level. So this this is pretty much the routine in these MMORPGs. You know, you start with one class, get to the end game, pick another class, and do the same thing. So so like I said, as of right now, once I get up. Once I get the warrior to max level and he's in the end game, I'll probably stop playing the game. Uh, maybe a few sporadic sessions here and there. That's about you know. That's about it. And then come on back to Gems of War. So, but like I said, this is what I have going right now. 
plans could change, you know, while while playing, so. Okay, so. But enough of that. I if I can remember to, I'll probably talk more about it tomorrow. So um, but otherwise, uh, one other thing that I just found out, or actually, I found out a long time ago, when it when it first came out, I just keep forgetting to bring it up in my cast. But um, for YouTube, they are they're not completely removing the dislike feature, but um, they're they're setting it up to where only you can see it. Now, I I kind of have mixed feelings about this. And I think uh, Emperor Lemon actually had a video saying why you should like dislikes, and I, I only saw, I only seen the video one time, but um, I think he kind of had the same, he kind of said the same thing that I did. Many of the likes that you'll see on these YouTube videos are actually fake likes, or, in the best case scenario, for lack of a better phrase, um. Many of the videos of, you, that you see on YouTube are very clickbaity. They're all trendy. They're all. I think uh, it started with Facebook. This girl walked into a room, and you'll never know what happened next. You know, kind of suckering into into clicking that video and then finding that you, you were just suckered into watching a video. Like, like I said, it's 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 all about the likes. So dislikes are actually more honest. Than like soccer. So, like I said, I have mixed feelings about this. On one end, on one end, you don't. I think people can potentially be turned off if a video has a whole bunch of dislikes on it. Oh, this must be a shitty video. I'm out of here. So, on one end, keeping them from seeing this, it might, it might, it might encourage some of these kind of people to actually check you out, check out your video. So, but on the other hand, um, dislikes can actually be a good indicator as to how, as obvious as it might sound, it can be a good indicator as to how, as, as to the quality of that video is. If you see a fair amount of dislikes on there, yeah, you're, you're better off just steering clear of it. So, but I think, um, for, you know, for bad videos like this, they need to see how many dislikes this video has. And... Hiding it from them is actually gonna. It's probably gonna actually bring back the clickbaitiness of your videos, of your thumbnails, of your titles. You know, it's actually gonna bring that back now. You know, this boy stepped into a bus, and you'll never know what happened. Or click here to find out. You know, there's probably gonna be a lot more of that now. So now that uh people can know. Oh, hang on. Let me stop. I'm gonna. Take a drink here of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. Getting hoarse. Okay, what up? Alright, now I'm gonna I'm right clicking the video and I'm gonna set it to loop. I forgot that this is this is only an 18 minute uh, video, so um but anyway. So I think I think um I think that's gonna come back now. Cause I mean if you're I mean if you're a troll person that likes to put out, you know, bad content like this just to troll people, um removing the di you know, removing the dislikes is actually gonna help these people. Cause now they can just go ahead and be a bunch of assholes with little to no repercussions, because these guys don't give two shits about uh about how many dislikes they have. So you know, that, so it's not gonna matter to him. So whereas I think um I think they had a they'd have a harder harder time uh these these trolls have a harder time putting out you know bad videos because if if a whole bunch of their uh, videos gets ratioed ratioed I guess that's the uh, YouTube term um when a video gets ratioed. That means you have that video has a lot of dislikes in proportion to likes, 
and possibly views as well. So, and this was something that uh, I actually looked at as well. Whenever I checked out a new video, if I saw a whole bunch of dislikes on it, I'll dislike it as well, and off I go. I won't even watch it. So, once that's removed, though, it's, it becomes a crapshoot. So, to kind of recap, um, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. On one end, for, for honest people like us that are actually are trying to put out the best videos we can, the best content that we can, um, you know, it can actually kind of help us. Because if they can't see how many dislikes that we have, then they're more likely to, you know, check us out. But on the other hand, if you're a, if you're a douchebag that's trying to put out, you know, sucker clickbaity videos, this is only going to help them. So, so and I'm, I don't think that means, yeah, I think my brain just, my brain just locked up. So, but, but anyway, you guys, you guys kind of get the idea though. Um, so yeah, so basically this, this whole thing, I think now that I think about it, it's basically a waste of effort. It shouldn't have even bothered because, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, um, it doesn't progress anything. I think that's the word I'm looking for. So, but I'd probably say as, aside from this, just um, just watch a fair, watch on planet Earth. Um, I think I finished up the deserts episode and just started watching the jungles episode. So, uh, just lots of lots of monkeys and frogs. So. But otherwise, um, yeah, um, I, I think I've said all the things that I wanted to say. Here, I'm, I'm just double checking something here. Yeah, uh, looks, yep, looks like I've said everything I wanted to say this morning. So, yeah, I'm a little, little wishy-washy right now, so. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. So, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, like always. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, thanks again for coming by, everyone. And see you all next time. Bye for now.